Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Desks and Dorks. It's your favorite board game design and creation podcast that, as always, is shaped by you. We bring you the best in indie tabletop gaming. And the response to my last video where I budget-ified a Magic the Gathering deck was so positive that I thought I would do it again um, by popular demand with a different type of hobby. That's right. Today, we're actually going to be looking at my beloved board game hobby, and I'm going to be budget-fying it, budget-ifying it. Uh, basically, I'm going to figure out a way to make it affordable for all of y'all beautiful people. Um, now, here's what we decided to do. Now, it is impossible necessarily to say uh, a game is objectively better than another game. So, um, I, you know, and I say this as somebody who lovingly hates on games for a living. Uh, but people like what they like. And my goal here is not to fi say, hey, the thing that you like sucks. Um, this is, you know, going to be a way of looking at a certain type of game. And finding something that is similar to it, um, but might not replace it necessarily. So I looked for things that are similar to existing hyper-popular games. Um, I took the average price based on what I could find for each of those games. And then I offer a more budget-related alternative for your board game hobby needs. So that's going to be where we kick off. Let's start with the elephant in the room, uh, which is Dungeons & Dragons. Now, if you were to get the Dungeons & Dragons set from... Amazon, it is usually about $190, which is a lot of money. Um, and this is not for anything like out of the ordinary. This is for the three core books that you need to play and a Dungeon Master screen. It comes in a bundle for about $190. Um, that's a lot of freaking money. Um, if you were to buy all these products separately from your friendly local game store, uh, shout out to our friendly local game stores, you should be buying from them. Uh, they would be around the same price. Your mileage may vary. Maybe you can get some of these books new or used for a cheaper price. But from what I could find, uh, for this, this is the bare minimum to get started in the thing. I guess you could get rid of the Dungeon Master screen and cut, save yourself another 20 bucks. Uh, but either way, it's around $190. Uh, this is the bare minimum you need to get into the world's most popular role-playing game. So if you are interested in getting into role-playing, that price is very prohibitive. Um, not everyone has 200 bucks just lying around to drop on playing Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, so, what's our solution to that? It's Cortex. Uh, Cortex is a rule book that I actually started playing with, a rule setting that I started playing with um, several years ago. Um, actually, way longer than that, almost a decade now, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but you make your own setting. You make your own setting, you make your own world, you make your own powers, um, and it is a dice-based system. So instead of having your stats go up, like Charisma, for example, um, the dice that you use for a given skill goes up. So when your character becomes a more experienced diplomat, they might stop rolling a d6 for their diplomacy checks and start rolling a d12 for their diplomacy checks. And you can actually get multiple of the same dice for different things. Um, but we have used this for a game about demon hunters in suburbia. We use this one to, for a historical role-playing game set during the Third Crusade. Like, there are so many things that you can do with Cortex, and all you need in order to engage with this role-playing system is this book. Um, and the dice. Obviously, the dice are not included, but uh, essentially, though, instead of going from, man, I really needed... $190 and all three of these rule books to do things, 50 bucks, and the Cortex rule book gets you exactly what you need. Um, I can't stress this enough. I, you know, Cortex is not D&D. It might not be for you. You might not enjoy it as much as you enjoy that classic sword and sorcery, but there's nothing stopping for you from making a sword and sorcery inspired role playing game within the Cortex system using the Cortex rules, and that saves you about $140, which is pretty great. Let's talk about Magic the Gathering. I put my beloved Kamigawa Neon Dynasty here. Um, if you were to try to crack open and get a, a booster box of cards, it would set you back about 90 bucks. If you wanted two booster boxes of cards, it would set you back about $190. Now, why might you want two booster boxes? Two booster boxes means that you can uh, draft as much as you like. Drafting, very, very popular format. Uh, and you might be able to crack those packs and make decks. Um, against your fellow opponents. This is something that a lot of kids used to do. Uh, like when we had four or five bucks burning a hole in our pocket, we had some basic lands. We'd go to Walmart, we'd get a pack, you'd put three of every type of basic land in there, you'd shuffle it up and you'd play. Um, that experience isn't very interesting and in fact leads to a lot of dumb blowouts. And if you want to play any sort of constructed magic, then may God have mercy on your soul because honestly, two booster boxes probably isn't going to be enough to get the kind of decks that you want. Now, again, you could say, Kyle, you could argue that you could buy Challenger decks, or what about Commander product? 
Um, but again, I'm talking the raw packs, baby. Um, Commander is a different issue, and there's a budget replacement for that. So maybe if we do another budget video, I can talk about that. But if you want the experience that playing a game of Magic the Gathering provides, why not do Res Arcana instead? Res Arcana is made that you can construct decks in a deck-building fashion. Um, there is a sealed version of it, for those of you familiar with Magic's thing, where you buy six packs, you crack open six packs, um, and you make a deck from that. There's a version of that that you can play in Res Arcana. There is a draft that you can play in Res Arcana. This is a deck-building game that perfectly encapsulates a lot of what makes Magic great, um, while we ignore a lot of the things that makes Magic bad. Um, if you were going to pick up two booster boxes of this or one box of Res Arcana, I can't recommend Res Arcana enough. Again, it's not magic, but a lot of the play patterns, the intelligent decision making that goes into it, the strategy that you have to conduct, all of those things go into making Res Arcana a phenomenal game and the kind of game that you're definitely going to want to pick up if you are a Magic player or if you're someone that is burnt out of Magic and looking to do something. And again, nothing is stopping you from playing Constructed Format. Uh, with these decks where you pick and choose your own cards. Um, there's a plethora of ways that you can play Res Arcana, and again, at $40, I can't recommend this one highly enough. Let's talk about this beast, though. This is Warhammer 40k. People love Warhammer 40k. Now, again, my budget replacement to this is not going to capture the feel and the spirit of Warhammer. It is impossible to get a budget game that uh, allows you to recapture the feeling of hundreds if not thousands of miniatures on a table all at once. But hundreds and thousands of miniatures on a table all at once cost a pretty penny, as does the paint that goes into modeling and creating them and making them look pretty. If you ever want to play these in tournaments, you have to paint them. Uh, kind of a bit of an issue. Where that comes to a head, though, or where that becomes far more interesting, though, is when you take a look at what the Warhammer game does. What you want is a high action skirmish game that can be played by two to four players. And what is a high action skirmish game that can be played with two to four players? It's unmatched. Uh, now, again, unmatched is not Warhammer. I'm not saying it is. But if you want a fast paced skirmish experience, you can capture the same feelings that you would get playing Warhammer as you would playing um, Battle of Legends, the unmatched original base set, I still think is the best entryway into this product, um, if only because Cobble and Fog is really hard to come by, Cobble and Fog being the other entry product that they released a couple years ago. Um, now again, here's the thing, Warhammer, hundreds of miniatures, this one, only four main ones, and then the sidekicks that are with them, so if you're paying close attention, um, there are four champions in this box, there are six sidekicks in between them. Um, there are three Harpies for Medusa, there is the Porter for Sinbad, Merlin for King Arthur, and the Jabberwocky uh, for Alice in Wonderland. However, the feeling those games create is still absolutely mesmerizing. Um, this is a blisteringly fast game that is very easy to teach, and again, you can play two to four players with just this base set. This also comes with the double-sided map. That's the other reason I included this one as opposed to the Battle of Legends Volume 2 that released earlier over the summer because in Battle of Legends Volume 2, uh, you get one map that is just a little more colorblind friendly. Not that that's a bad thing, but I chose this because, hey, you get a little more bang for your buck. And again, you wind up saving about $120, which is absolutely fantastic. Yanenga is still D tier. Uh, this brings us to a total savings of $290, almost $300. So again, you can purchase these three things. You could go out, you could get yourself some D&D, &D, but you'd be better off, I think in a lot of ways, getting a Cortex. You could get a booster box or two of MTG, but you'd be better off getting a box of Res Arcana, or you could spend $160 on 40K, but if you're looking for a fast miniature-based experience, and you're not interested in the sheer number of minis and the tactical military aspect of it, you'd be far better to get unmatched, and you could spend that $300 on other games or other things that you want. So again, we've saved you essentially $300 um, in terms of value that you have been given if you decide to take these steps. Um, if you like this type of content, if you are interested in this type of budget content, please let us know. Um, we would be really happy to kind of do some more of those things. Um, don't worry. I know Yanenga is not actually D tier. Uh, we are going to be doing hopefully a little bit more of these. But again, if these are things that you like, please, 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 please tell us. Uh, we really do listen and we pay a lot of attention to the things that you guys comment and suggest and um, add to our stuff. So 
Without further ado, I'm Kyle out for Desks and Dorks. Oh, before I forget, uh, if you're interested in picking up a copy of After the Rain, our wonderful one-shot role-playing game, where we play around with memory, character, and the things that make you who you are, uh, then I would highly suggest you head over either to DeskinDorks.org to get yourself an online copy, or over to Indie Press Revolution to order a physical copy today. Thank you all so much. You've been awesome, and I will talk to you later. Peace.